film we're going to have a look at fitting Daple's brand new 00 scale B4 for DCC Digital using a Lentz DCC chip. Uh, so it's always nice to see newly designed logos. Uh, it's a nicely proportioned little steam shunter. We've got the Lentz Silver Mini 6 pin decoder here, 10311. It's a fully NMRA compliant DCC decoder, so it supports all the CV programming, it supports 9909 addressing and 128 and 28 speed step settings, plus the rest. So that's just there. Oh, we have to just quickly pin one on the decoder is marked as a little silver dot. Okay. So we're going to say straight off the bat this is um, a decoder fitting that requires a bit of patience but it can be done quite simply, just take your time, note where all the screws are. If you want, ask your dealer to help you. So quickly lift it up and underneath first one, two, three, four screws to remove the keeper plate. So you see down there, got the four screws out, two there, one there, one there. Right, this needs care, there's the brake rigging here. We want to lift the back of the keeper plate first. There we go. And then gently lift out. You see the brake rigging there has stuck. They've just put some tacky wax or something on it. There we are. So that now lifts out. So just be careful with those brake rigging, not to miss them and bend them all out of shape. Right, this is the slightly scary bit. You've now got all the bearings exposed and if you start fiddling around with it, the axles will drop out and you we'll need a pair of tweezers to just line up the bearings and drop them back into their slots so if we can avoid that it will be easier okay so the next step is to find the other three screws so if we fold that coupling over and this coupling back there is one screw here at the back of the loco Loosen that and then get it out of the way. It's slightly different from the other screws, so just keep it separate. I think these are countersunk, and this one's got a, a cheese head on the top. Right, this one's obvious. That's a straightforward one pull out. These three screws are all the same size. This third one is well hidden. It's right underneath the coupling at the front, between the cylinders. And we'll just pull that out as well. Right, now, we don't want to pull it by the wheels because they'll just come out of their axle boxes. So we want to lift gently by the guard irons at the back. Loosen at the front where the cylinders are, and here we go. When it's free, pull it back, and that will pull out the blanking plug there. I'm going to leave this and support it with my hand so the wheels don't drop out. Pin one is here, and it's also marked on the blanking plug when we pull that out. So 1 and 6 are marked on there, and there's a little silver dot by the 1 as well. So, silver dot lines up with pin 1 on this side, so I'm turning the decoder over and inserting it. Now it's... do the reverse. So, ease the decoder in first and slide 
the chassis back in. Oh, it's tighter because the decoder is longer than the blanking plug. This is fiddly. So that screw is actually slightly longer. These two front screws are the same length. Um, so just identify the longest one to go in the back. And the two short ones go into the front. And my god, that's awkward. Right. Thank god for magnetised screwdrivers. There she goes. Now you can just gently fold those over and they sit so that they can flex in their channels. We've managed to do that without dropping the axle boxes, that's good. And then this bottom keeper plate, use the brake shoes to find the position against the front of the wheels. The couplings go into their little guides. And then the four countersunk screws go in. I can appreciate why they've done it this way. Um, I'm not really in a position to say that they could have done this better. Um, it could have been easier, I think, but I couldn't honestly say how. They obviously want these screws all supporting things to hold it together nicely. And the newer design models, the smoke box will come out and you'll have access to the plug there. Um, I think they probably thought of that design after this one was already through the drawing office. But she's all back together and we'll run her in a second. This is a little um, additional note. Because the chip is longer than the blanking plug, uh, to stop it sort of pushing the whole chassis back, if you take the, the plug section there and slowly, just very gently, tweak it down so it's putting the chip at an angle, it will just grab it a little bit more room in the um, smoke box. So we've got the loco on the track. What they tend to do before I give it full power is just check it out on the programming track. Uh, firstly, that will give you an indication of you put it in upside down. Um, so uh, you can correct that before you give it full power. But also it's worth going into CV30 and reading the error code. You want to see a zero. Um, it's not so important for locos with plug-in chips, uh, but it's just nice to check out everything, make sure it's fine. So we've got it. The decoder's just on factory settings for acceleration and deceleration. People can go in and change that if they wish. Loco runs really nice and smoothly, even down to a very slow speed. Right at the bottom you can see the motor just stepping um, as it flicks between each pole. But not so noticeable. There is a flywheel to smooth that out a bit. One other nice feature is on function zero it turns on the firebox glow. You can see it twinkling away there.
and it's a controllable function so you don't need to leave it on all the time. So this is the Sussex Yellow B4 which we fitted with the Lent Silver Mini Decoder. Um, I really like the colour, I know that the real thing would have been stained very quickly. But it, it certainly stands out as a little industrial steam loco. So the motor control is really nice. This is just on factory settings for the decoder, so we, you can go in and change acceleration, braking delay and all those speed control features if you wish, but I think it's pretty good from the start. It will go all the way down to a crawl. Accelerates and decelerates smoothly. And also the way they've got the loco set up is that the headlamp button function zero turns on the firebox glow there. It's a nice little feature. 